Hi everyone, I'm Jordana Rell and this is Inside Israeli Basketball. Coach Elad Hassim breaks down the team by position, guards and post players. State-of-the-art renovations begin on Maccabi Haifa's home court. Our cameras join owner Jeff Rosen at Romema Arena. We review which teams are hot in the Super League, and we get an update on Haifa's progress in the Euro Challenge tournament. Frank Robinson is up to no good once again with another practical joke. And we go on a fishing trip with Haifa guards Derek Lowe and Larry O'Bannon as they look for something that feels like home. All that and more next on Inside Israeli Basketball. We thought it would be interesting to get a little bit technical here. We sat in on a film session between coach Elad Hassin and owner Jeff Rosen while they were breaking down the team's guards. Let's watch. Unlike uh, Derek, he's putting the pressure by the penetrations. He's uh, very, very good at pick and roll. You've got to have at least two guards that can handle the ball and uh, play pick and roll. When we have, uh, let's say, Marco is out, instead of putting the ball in the post, we are putting the pressure on pick and rolls with Avi and uh, one of the mobile big guys that we have. This is a pick and roll league, and uh, as a uh, you can see other leagues, pick and roll is most, maybe the most common play in basketball today. From point guards Avi Ben Shimol and Derek Lowe, Coach Hassim demands certain leadership skills. To run the team, to be the, the, the floor general on the court, uh, to direct things, set the tempo, both offense and defense. The big guys, I need to pass them the ball to make them, them move and the guards also to create for them for open shots. Basically to organize the game like the coach one. The point guard is a very good shooter, so Avi try either to shoot or to attack off the pick and roll. I need to make sure that like every other player in the game is, is in the game, is affected on the game. If you don't have the drive, try to feed Robert in the middle of the lane or use the high post for second pass. When we decided to go on the first position, which is point guard, we wanted to bring two guys that are totally different and then you, they can play together. So Avi is a 6'5 point guard and he's a more of a driver and Derek Lowe is a 6'1, 6'2 point guard that can shoot better. This uh, helped us to play in a different style. I was never a vocal player. I was more just like a you know, show by example type player. I think I'm getting a lot better at you know, directing uh, players on the court, telling them where to go and running the plays uh, and just taking more command on the floor and uh, you know, credit to coach, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's slowly but surely bringing that side out of me. Frank Robinson, Larry O'Bannon and Sylvan Landisberg rack up the points at the shooting guard position. He wants his guards to score and he wants his guard to defend. And we have three shooters um, that rotate um, between myself, Larry, and Sylvan. So first option is, is when we can, Sylvan to slash in, and then option two would be for him to take the jump shot. Yes, yes, for sure. Yes, he's the first driver. Because he's explosive on the drives. He's very good also with the ball. You, def you, you stunt, you made, made Robert pass the ball because he wants to take the last shot, and Davidi took the last shot. And it's a different story, and could be the difference between the game. So, bravo for the extra effort, but it must be everybody. Not only the last play, everybody, and for 40 minutes. It's hard to beat us when our guards are on. In Paris, the second game, Derek Logan missed a shot. And if he's shooting well, combined with all the other guards shooting, I mean, it's, it's going to be tough to beat. Maccabi Haifa's storied Romema Arena is getting a multi-million dollar facelift this year and the team is playing their home games in nearby Nesher on Hakiria Rabin School campus. Once finished, Maccabi Haifa's new home will rival any arena in Israel.
witnessing today, the construction of the renovated, the new Romema, the future of basketball here in Haifa. From the day we arrived, we have elevated the basketball program and our goal is to be the best in Israel. This arena gives us the wind at our back to challenge the incumbents to achieve a championship here. And this is the giant step forward in that program. I tell you what, first of all, just to give you some statistics, this is going to be the second in large uh, arena in Israel, after Nokia. We're extending each wing by like almost one third. One third here and one third down there. So it's going to be 150% bigger, plus or minus, right? You see it here. You have the first one, the existing one. Right. And you have the east wing and the west so, so wing. So this is the new wing, is that? Yes. yes. Oh, wow. What's the challenge in this one is to make in the old building a new one and a modern one with all the new facilities. This building was built in the 70s by Haifa municipality. And now to make it a new one with 5,000 uh, seats, it's quite a challenge. The existing uh, building is from here to here. And these are the new wings that will be added. And so these will be built, and the last stage will be opening the uh, wall. As you can see, it's a very special building. This building has uh, enough historical value and architectural value that uh, the owners and uh, we especially and the structural engineers uh, go to a great deal of effort to preserve it. This will be the basketball palace in all of Israel. We'll have the best facilities, uh, a new parquet, a new scoreboard. We're gonna have VIP boxes. We're giving the players the, the, the best facilities we're going to be expecting the best performance from them, and we hope uh, not only will it bring us playoff, but a hopeful championship. Coming up, team manager Uri Sagi learns why he should not bet against his own team. I love this holiday, especially because you come all together with the family, lighting the candles and singing song and eating together and blessing together. So I really like this holiday. Like I wait for him all the time. But I don't have something really like really special because it's every time it's special for me. It's the first time uh, in, the, in the Israel that we're not gonna have break for the for the holiday. So probably I'm gonna spend with my teammates. We will organize something. Maybe some dinner or we'll see. He's Uri Sagi, Maccabi Haifa's team manager and beloved go-to guy. At a recent practice, we caught up with him while he was carrying the team on his back. Literally. There's more to that story. We had a bet before the game against Paris. Uri said we're not going to qualify. I said we are going to qualify. So you guys run. Uri came to me before the game against Paris and he told me, um, Coach, what do you think about the game? I told him, uh, I think the Paris team is a great team, but uh, we have a chance. And he told me, okay coach, let's make a bet. I said, okay, I like bets. He asked me, what you are willing to do for the team if we're going to win Paris? I tell him, we're going to talk about win or we talk about passing Paris. He said, if we pass. After the first game, Ori was very confident that he would win the bet. And of course, I had to pay. Uh, him if uh, we were losing and after the second game that we won I called him Uri oh, remember the bet he said yes I tell him if we pass you're gonna put the team on the baseline all the players one by one I'm gonna carry them on my back and I was more than happy to do it to carry all the team on my back Decide that my back is hurting the day after, it's okay, as long as we win. Over! You too! Take a hike! Good job, Good job. Good job. I can tell you now, and I can commit in front of the camera, if you're going to the final four, it doesn't matter which one, the Canadian, the European final four, or the league final four, I will not do half court. 
I will do a full court, all the team, include four courts. Here is analyst Simi Rieger with the Haifa Report. Marco Killingsworth, the killer, leads the team in points and rebounds. The power forward is averaging over 15 a game while grabbing over eight boards a game. He currently ranks in the top 10 in the league in both categories. Power forward of the Shai Kadir, since being acquired from Maccabi Tel Aviv, he's really helped off the boards, averaging over nine a game and has 14 points a game, very close to a double-double. Sylvan Landsberg brings a lot to the plate, scored a Super League career high of 17 points against Maccabi Ashdod. He shot over 60% from the floor. The former University of Virginia star is averaging over 10 points a game in his rookie season. I love this kid. Maccabi Haifa had no difficulty in beating Frankfurt in the first group game of the Euro Challenge. It was a really tough, tight game, but in the fourth quarter, the Haifa team showed their strength, going on a 9-0 run, leading to an 83-78 victory, leading all scores with Larry O'Bannon, a boy from Louisville. Maccabi Haifa needs to finish within the top two of the group to advance to the next round. The biggest story of this year is Bnei Sharon. They've been up and they've been down. The team began the season 4-1 and, and upset Maccabi Tel Aviv away a 91-88 victory. Sean James leads the league in rebounds with over 10 per game. Maccabi Ashdod has been the surprise since joining the Super League from Division 2. The team is led by former University of Kentucky standout Ramil Bradley, a Tubby Smith boy. The shooting guard leads the entire league in points scored with nearly 20 per game. Up next, we meet the rest of Maccabi Haifa's roster, the big men in the post. My mom bought um, all of us 10 speeds, eight of us. So my mom told us, uh, told my brother to teach me how to play, uh, teach me how to ride. And um, I just kept falling off, kept falling off, kept falling off. And uh, I skint myself all the way up. I mean, I skint myself up. But it was funny. I mean, it, it, it taught me, you know, just don't give up. It really did taught me how to just not, not, never give up. In the post, Maccabi Haifa has choices. Coach Elad Hassin broke it down for owner Jeff Rosen. Elad Hassin relies on several important roles from his big men. It starts with Marco Killingsworth grabbing rebounds and changing shots in the paint. We got to rebound the ball and get it to our guards. Uh, when the coach starts running the place, well, we got to get it and score. Marco Killingsworth is uh, an excellent player, uh, all around player, a great guy in the post. Uh, the thing is that Marco needs to improve and uh, will improve him only if he play a bigger player. And I think the fact that we got Robert Robert with a 7 foot 2. And he told me himself, after he came here and we talk about Robert and about the team, the fact that he played every practice in Natania against 7 foot 2, when he came to a game and he played 6 foot 8, 6 foot 9, everything become easier. Marco. It's the best thing about Marco that he most likely needs another guy on him uh, besides his own defender. He dragged the defense. Keep in mind, as our four-man Sasha, he need hit his three balls. When I get it down, I make sure I score. For Coach Hassin's offense, Robert Rothbard and Sasha Braddock are versatile big men that can spread the defense with their ability to shoot from the perimeter. Sasha is also an opposite version of the power forward. He's more of a, a four that can play the three. Shooter, can pass very well, can put the ball on the floor. For me, I can play post up. I can uh, shoot three points and penetrate. So the, I think the coach thinks that there's advantage for our team because there is not a lot of help for, from the my side. So the, the, that uh, this thing make uh, more space for other players to create and uh, to, to 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 make a uh, easy basket. Mm -hmm. 
רוברט is a skill player. There are no doubts about his skills. Not many people that can stop him because skills, he, get, he has everything. He can shoot, he can pass, he can post, he can rebound, he can run the floor. He's very mobile for a seven footer. He's smart, he understands the game. So he's a guy that because he's so tall, we need to use him more of a mobile guy that plays above the rim and behind the defense. Since I've came to this team, I think I've learned the most in this short period of time in my whole career. As opposed to most pro coaches, that it, they don't really teach a lot, I think he really teaches the game a lot. So it helps me, I like it, because I, I, I really feel like I always want to improve. So somebody that really cares and you know, puts a lot of energy into, into the details, it, it, uh, it helps me personally, it makes me learn the game a lot quicker. I've learned some things here that you know, I didn't know before and I've been playing for seven years. They are different and again they fulfill each other and they, and they push each other to, to improve and get better. Welcome to Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. <laughs> When we come back, Derek Lowe and Larry O'Bannon feel right at home in Hyde Park. I'll probably be fishing, probably, or uh, probably spending some time with some teammates, uh, having a nice dinner with them, enjoying, kicking back. This team right here is pretty much my my, my family away from my actual family, so uh, we're going to be spending a lot of time together, you know, kind of fill that void of, uh, of not being home with our actual parents and friends and loved ones, so I think we're going to spend it together. Every team in the Super League features a mix of people coming together from globally diverse backgrounds. Here in Haifa, players from Israel, Kentucky and Hawaii went looking for some common ground, and they found it at the water edge. Fishing for? I'm fishing for uh, Saragus. I'm from Kentucky. I enjoy fishing. We fish in rivers and lakes and ponds. I've never fished in the ocean. Hopefully, we won't pull in any sharks or anything. Oh, I think I might got some. No, reef, guaranteed. No, I just got a rock. I'm from Hawaii. Obviously, they do a lot of fishing down over there. Unlike Larry, I hope we pull up a shark. So. <laughs> I've been fighting this rock for a long time. The reason why I like Haifa is, you know, it reminds me a lot like home. I mean, as far as, you know, having the beach. High up on a hill, beautiful scenery. Nice weather, you know, it doesn't get extremely cold like in other places where I've been. Nice people take you in with open arms and I'm excited to be here. I talked to my mom, she calls me on the way to work. I check up on my sisters probably like three times a week. I pretty much reach out to home every day. I have to call and talk to my dad. I'm like his best buddy, that's my best buddy too, so I have to call and talk to him every day. He wants to know how practice went. It's just me and my dad. Every day I call him. I call my friends and all of my other family members. You know, just keeping in touch with them just really makes you feel like you haven't left. I'm pretty close with my family, so I pretty much reach out to them every, every day. It makes you feel comfortable. 
It's not my day for fishing, man. Yeah, no, not my day. All my tattoos have to do with my family. Traditional Hawaiian tattoos, uh, we don't per se like draw pictures for what we want to, to say in a tattoo. There's certain shapes that have certain meaning behind it. You know, these birds is a koa e ula design, and it basically symbolizes you know, my, my, my dad is the center one, and these are my two brothers. It's the taro leaf design, and it just symbolizes the relationship between my dad and us, and how he provided for us, sacrificed for us, and just took care of us. This design means uh, my protector design, and uh, you know, my family protector is the shark god. His name is Kamoho Ali'i. There's a lot of meaning behind it. So, with all this water, man, and the Mediterranean Sea, and the waves, and, and everything else, man, it gotta seem like back home in Hawaii. It does. I'm actually kind of tempted to just take off from one of these rocks and just dive into the water. I have to find the jet ski. I would get one in Kentucky, but I just don't want to ride on the river. Hyper's been a winning team. They went to the championship one year, made it to the final four, uh, went to the championship of the cups one year. So winning was the main thing uh, for me. You know, when all else failed, I just want to win. That's it for this edition of Inside Israeli Basketball. Don't forget to follow Maccabi Haifa and the Super League all season long on TriangleInternet.tv. So long, everyone.